we've got the very basic tool rest setup fixed to the compound slide. Tool rest there is set up parallel to the axis of the spindle. Uh, we've got a piece of scrap brass in here which came out of some big valve and we've turned it down to about three quarters of an inch just to get some material to work with. And we're going to use the graver which if I can get it in frame there I described at the same time as I did the tool rest uh, there we are I'm trying to get the light just to catch on there let's keep trying okay there's the it's ground to a 45 degree diamond those little shiny spots I just touched it up on the uh, grinding wheel and also a little bit just on the side of each face oh there we are you can see there's a slight fresh grinding on the side so that plus the uh, little bit of extra touch up on the front face that basically is how we set it up so the basic idea rather like with uh, wood turning is to use the tool fairly close in fact we can come back just a little don't want to be too far off otherwise we get more chatter and you usually get a bit of chatter anyway this is for me anyway it's just for roughing sometimes just an awkward shape uh, let's see if we can zoom in a bit now I've just zoomed in a bit here we're going to fire up slightly higher revolutions than the lowest we're going to try and put a little chamfer on the end here We've changed the uh, angle, camera angle, it may show a little bit better. What we've done so far, we've just put a little bit of chamfer on there, just by working very slowly. We'll add a little bit more chamfer and get the machine running again. You may or may not hear me. I'm going to try and just add a little chamfer. slightly increase the chamfer. We're not looking to remove a lot of material at once. I'm going to try and make this into a slight curve or radius. take a little bit on the uh, other side. Very gradual. The stress is only taking off a very small amount and we've got the beginnings of a radius 
Bear in mind too, I'm using brass, so I'm not using any lube. You can do this on steel, but it's uh, best done with some lubrication, a bit of sulfur-based oil. Let's see if we can zoom in any tighter. Try and get an angle just to see what we've done on the radius there. Uh, you can sort of see it. I'll have to take a sideways shot. The uh, area behind that before the threads was only rough machined. It doesn't look very good, but it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> Now uh, we'll just uh, we'll just add a little bit more radius if possible, carefully. to move my whole body as well as the arm you get a better sort of flow now back to the uh, this area again This is not meant to show a huge amount of work being done, just to basically illustrate the uh, usefulness of the tool. If the uh, tip of the tool, if the sharp tip is used, you can actually, I don't know whether this will stand up to it, I can take a small groove possibly, we'll just try, it may chatter. to make what might be an o-ring groove I'm not paying much attention to uh, detail here Let's bring the camera in just for a closer look and that will virtually cover it I think, just to give some idea. Okay, this is just to finish. So what we've got on this part here is something approximating a radius and here we've got a groove which with a bit of work and polishing could be an o-ring groove. Let me try and bring the camera around just to get a bit more square. <clears throat> All right, now there you can see the groove. Let me find a bit of white paper. There we are. You can see, I mean, it's not a perfect taper. I'm, it takes longer and the distraction of the camera and stuff makes a bit of a problem. But there we are. Slight radius and a groove. Two of the things you can do with the graver. Arguably you can put in a profile tool or you know there are other ways of doing it but this is just one approach that sometimes can help, particularly on brass or aluminum.